Two statistics illustrate Canada's disastrous economic outcomes in recent years and the bleak outlook. First, as Fraser Institute Senior Fellow and former Statistics Canada Chief Economic Analyst Philip Cross observes in a recent study, Canada's 10-year average real GDP growth per capita was its lowest since the Great Depression. And it's not a problem we've imported, from the fourth quarter of 2015 to the fourth quarter of last year cumulative growth was about 2% in Canada versus 12% in the United States. Second, this trend of poor economic growth is unlikely to reverse anytime soon since business investment, which drives growth and productivity, declined 20% in Canada per worker. Inflation adjusted from 2014 to 2021, compared to a 15% increase in the U.S. over the same period, as Fraser Institute economists Tegan Hill and Joel Eames document in a separate study. In 2014, business investment per worker in Canada was already 21% below the U.S., by 2021 it was barely half the American level. The strategy employed by Canadian governments both federal and provincial, of trying to achieve economic growth through increasing government spending clearly is not working. Nor should anyone have expected it to. Milton Friedman's adage. Nobody spends somebody else's money as carefully as he spends his own, pithily expresses the problem with government spending, it's done less carefully and less productively than private spending. And since economic resources are limited, government consumption inevitably takes away from the private sector. Empirical studies provide abundant evidence that government spending does not stimulate economic growth not even in recessions. Government spending relative to GDP is higher than the level that would achieve the best rates of economic growth, and economic freedom of which one indicator is limited government spending is key to attaining economic well-being. And past Canadian experience points to a retrenchment of government as a way to achieve higher rates of economic growth. In stark contrast to recent years of rising government spending, Miserable economic growth and declining business investment, Canada actually led the G7 in the growth of both real GDP growth and business investment from 1997 to 2007. These positive outcomes were achieved on the heels of significant spending cuts by the federal government and many of the provinces. Notably, Saskatchewan and Alberta, whose governments drastically reduced spending and whose citizens greatly benefited from increases to investment, economic growth, and living standards. A key to this success was that spending cuts left more resources to the private sector and enabled tax cuts, particularly in business taxes, which do the most economic damage. By contrast, governments today accompany their rapid spending increases with higher taxes. The Trudeau government in particular is escalating its carbon tax annually and recently introduced special taxes targeting financial institutions in general. Banks' dividend income and corporate share buybacks all of which discourage business investment and reduce economic productivity. To sum up the Canadian experience, aggressive government spending cuts and tax cuts in the 1990s led to economic outperformance relative to other countries and higher living standards. While significant government spending increases and new taxes in recent years have coincided with collapsing investment, the worst decade of economic growth since the Great Depression, and a real per capita growth rate that is dwarfed by the U.S.